in the moment, I actually didn't really uh, think anything of it. I remember there were two torsos, and they both had really big dicks. Like, I was kind of into it. I, I didn't really think, like, oh, I'm having sex with a demon. I'm just kind of like, damn, like, this is really hot. Like, these people, like, aren't physically my type typically, but, like, I'm they don't, really they don't, into this. It's not um, like they're physically physically anything. Okay, so would you, would you say that they're dicks? Hello, is this Bobby? Yes, this is. How are you doing, Bobby? I'm doing pretty well. How are you? Doing good, Bobby. Bobby says here that you had sex with an incubus in a dream. <laughs> that says is that you true. Have, says that you have always wanted to have sex with an incubus, and you feel like you no longer want to have sex with an incubus ever since you had that dream. And my first question about this... What is an incubus? You don't know what an incubus is? I have no idea what an incubus is. So it's a type of demon. Um, There are two main types of sex demons. There's an incubus and a succubus. An incubus is a demon that has a dick. They typically prey on um, women and will, uh, you know, like fuck them. And then a succubus has a vagina and they will typically prey on men and, um, you know, fuck them. Okay. And all right. So an incubus, it's a sex demon with a penis that typically goes after women. And what is it about the incubus that attracts you and makes you want to have sex with it? Well, I feel like I'm a very submissive person and just something about this otherworldly being just completely dominating me and there's nothing I can do about it. It's just incredibly appealing. Okay. Um, not anymore. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend having sex with an incubus. Okay. Okay, so, so all right, so you consider yourself very submissive and the fantasy of a, a highly, highly dominant sexual experience is, is very appealing to you. And then you went and you had this dream. And tell me the events of the dream. So, in the dream... Um, in the moment, I actually didn't really uh, think anything of it. I remember there were two, um, there were like two torsos. I can only say that they're torsos, but in the moment, I just considered them as two different people. Um, but one of them had a more masculine frame, like you know, very muscular, and um, the other one had a more feminine frame, like you know, nice curves and tits. Um, they were both very dark skinned and totally hairless. They had no hair on them. Um, I also remember there's, there was something off about their smile. Like it was very, it was freaky and they both had really big dicks. Um, and the dicks kind of look weird. They didn't look like human dicks, but like, I was kind of into it. I I didn't really think like, oh, I'm having sex with a demon. I'm just kind of like, damn, like, this is really hot. Like, these people, like, aren't physically my type typically, but, like, I'm they don't, really they don't, into this. It's um, not like they're physically, physically anything. Okay, so when you, when you say that their dicks are not human, is there an animal that you could compare their dicks to, or were their dicks just a completely new type of dick? It was like a completely new type of dick. It was, it was almost human but there was something i feel like there was something about the head and also the curvature of it it was it was very curved and like it, it was like almost like lumpy uh, if, if that makes sense i i don't know um but um yeah so okay. i just so remember like so there's two really of them you said well i can't say for certain that there was two of them there was definitely two dicks though and two torsos but in high and like thinking about the dream further, I actually can't say for certain that these two torsos weren't connected. I, mm-hmm. I feel like they okay. may have been. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, and I don't really remember what exactly uh, what sexual acts explicitly went down, but I know that I um, I was fucked and I had a really great time um, after that dream. That was the first dream I had. Um, after the dream, I woke up and was just kind of like, huh, it was hot. And then I went back to sleep. 
Um, do you have any more questions about the about the sex? Part? Yeah, I do. I do have a question. So, all right. So, so you have a dream. You meet the incubus. Um, they've got the but they've got you know more torsos and dicks and and just an anatomy of of that you really couldn't find in the conscious world and you have sex with it and uh, you have a great time but you're telling me that after this dream you no longer had any desire to to ever again have sex with an incubus and i'm wondering why the switch of the brain is it because you're like okay been there done that check time to move on or you know i was expecting you to say that you had a bad time go go ahead t- i mean tell me tell me why tell me why the 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 switch of opinion so one of the uh things that i know about um incubuses and succubuses um just based off of my brief readings from the internet is that um reoccurring sex with uh with these demons can lead to very poor mental and physical health the day that ensued um was one of the worst mental health days i had had in a really long time like uh Mm. there's some really dark shit i'm not going to get into i'm going to talk about that with my therapist tomorrow but um yeah, it was just, it was a terrible day. And like, I kept thinking back to that dream. And um, I just remember, like, that's when I started realizing more of the freakier aspects of it, like their inhuman penises and the fact that the torsos were probably connected. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of like, I can totally see how um, having sex with these demons uh, over a long period of time can drive somebody to become so not only mentally ill but physically ill because um it it was almost like almost like the after effects you know like um yeah like it was kind of like coming off of a drug Hmm. i mean that makes a lot of sense to me right these demons i don't know look i I don't know a whole lot about demons i'm not going to pretend like i do but uh anecdotally it would make sense to me that the demon, their greatest goal is to uh, instill havoc and pain upon the mortals. And so they trick you with their hot bodies and uh, uh, dastardly sexual skill into uh, uh, invading your body invading your mind and then once once you've given them the clear because they've hypnotized you with their 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 sex appeal they they go and they wreak their havoc yeah totally because that's another thing about about this instance is that um the sex was totally consensual i i was i was down with it um but um yeah, there's there's actually another element to the story that I wanted to talk about. So um, later in the day, like towards the end of the day, um, you know, I, I'd been pretty horny. I haven't been laid in a little while. And um, so it was the night after I had the incubus interaction. I, um, I decided to, you know, get out my dildo and, you know, like use it. Um, but I could not get it in. And um, after I kept trying and failing, I realized um, I was bleeding like out my bussy. So um, it, it, it kind of reminded me of when I would have sex with somebody and then try to masturbate the next day. Um, it, was, it was very similar to that. Hmm. Hmm. Bobby, I'm glad to hear that you learned your lesson. It sounds as though... You fulfilled a fantasy, sort of learned your lesson from it, and don't intend to dive back into that fantasy. Do you feel like we learned something from this? I, I feel like there is there's a, a few different angles here. I feel like the angle of you know be careful what you wish for. Fantasy is not as great as reality. Although I guess there I guess I guess the fantasy is a fantasy because it's a dream. But I don't know. Do we learn anything? I feel like we learned something. 
I feel like the mind can be a powerful thing. I agree. Thank you very much for calling, Bobby. Of course. Thank you for having me. You know what? I, I know that Bobby just told us that we shouldn't have sex with demons, but now that they put it in my head, I'm kind of like... I wouldn't go out of my way. But if the opportunity presented itself for me to have sex with a demon and all that was at stake was that I felt really shitty for like a day or two afterwards, I'd do it just for... I feel like I, I'm constantly on the hunt for new and interesting life experiences and I would add, I would file sex with a demon under that category. So... You know, people can people can warn me against things, but uh, at the end of the day, I have to touch the wall to see if the paint is dry. Hello. Hello. What's uh, up, Gek? What's up? Not a whole heck of a lot. What's going on with you? Um, my current conflict is kind of intense, so okay. I hope you're prepared. I can assure you um, I'm not, but I will, I will, ex I will, I will go through anyway. Alrighty, well, I appreciate it. Um, currently, I am pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, and I just have a lot of, not a lot, but a couple people in my life who I'm close with. Four men. Um, just kind of like shoving their opinions down my throat. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot to handle. And I, I don't know how to go about telling these people that I love that they just need to chill out a little. Um. Mm -hmm. um okay. So you're pregnant and you have people in your life yes. who are telling you their opinion on what you should or shouldn't do in terms of whether or not to keep it. Right. And I mean, it's, it's easy for them to say that, you know, when they're not going through the current you know, situation that I'm experiencing. Sure. sure. Um, um, so, I mean, look, forget, forget, forgetting about these, these other people for a second and, and sort of focusing more on you. What, uh, right. Tell me, and I'm, I'm, you know, throughout this call, I'm not going to add even slightly to the opinions of any of these people, but I'm happy to sort of talk with you about how you feel about everything. Um, Thank you. What, I what, appreciate what, that because sometimes those people don't realize that that's not necessarily feedback in a sense. What are your feelings about this current situation? Well, being 22 years old and not financially stable mm -hmm. um, and the father also being fairly young, it's definitely not going to be beneficial for all parties to keep it. Um, sure. I'm going to have to terminate it. Mm -hmm. Which sucks and it's painful. Um, at the same time, I have to think of my mental health and my mental wellness. Mm hmm Absolutely. Um, okay, so when you say at the same time I have to think of my health and my mental wellness, are you are you having trouble coming to terms with the idea of putting yourself first in this situation? Um. Yeah, I guess so. I, I'm i not often a person who really is, you know, choosing the most autonom autonomous path 
for myself. Sure. So I don't know. It's difficult at the same time. Like I, I can't have other people living through me and deciding mm-hmm. things for me and mm-hmm. just not be fulfilled with life due to that. Um, okay. So you're, you're, you've kind of made your decision when, when you're, when you're circulating your thoughts around this in a way that's isolated from the opinions that are, that are coming at you externally, you, you sound as though you've made your, your, uh, decision, maybe not necessarily your piece, but at least your decision about how you want to move forward. Yeah, absolutely. And to what degree... It's okay, so now that you've made your decision, to what degree are the people around you making you second-guess or reconsider your decision? Or is it merely it just the fact that they're giving you an opinion in and of itself is bothersome and annoying to you? I think just, like, the opinion... Um, itself is um, they do like my father for example he does want me to terminate it Um, but he is just so forceful about it um, and making appointments for me Um, I'm an adult I'm capable of doing that myself 100% and also just like the criticism and backlash that comes with that. It's hurtful and it's been pretty consistent for all of my life. Okay, that was the that was the other thing I was going to say is like, you know, this whole pregnancy aside, like how's right. your relationship been with your your father? I general? mean, honestly, it it's like pretty much daddy issues type of thing. It's really difficult. Um, like him having full custody of me at a ch- as a child, um, I think there should have been some preparation for having to be a bit more emotional. Um, so I don't know. It's just been difficult for a long time, and I've communicated with him that I do need emotional support right now and he says you know i'm not capable of giving that to you um although if i'm expected to make changes in my life i'm currently in treatment at a program and um if i'm expected to make certain changes for him i feel like i should be able to have some expectations as well sure sure let me ask you that. Have you have, have you spoken to a real therapist about these these things? Yeah. Um here there is a therapist at the program mm-hmm. that I'm at currently. And um, what do they say when they when when you tell these things to them? Well, she offers um suggestions. She offers a lot of validation. Mm-hmm. Um, what 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 suggestions time, has she offered you? We, um, she's offered me, um, suggestions of, like, maybe bringing to his attention, doing some bonding, like, once a week or something, like, going out to dinner or seeing right, a movie. Right. Um, because we don't talk, we don't bond. Um, right. and I, I think that would be beneficial, although he's always usually busy with my stepmom. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, look, I get where you're coming from when you're like, you know, hey, you haven't been uh, really all that present in all these other situations. So how come all of a sudden now this is going on? You're uh, trying to take charge, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I He's not obligated to really do anything for me. I'm an adult now. Right. Um, But making the excuse of you're an adult now, I kind of do bring to his attention that since I was a child, it's 
been like this and maybe there's just some things that I still deal with and some thoughts I still deal with regarding, you know, my past with him. So I think that could be healing if we could compromise in some sort of sense. That'd be well, Annan, listen, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. It sounds like you have a very, um, you know, goddamn, dude. Uh, I mean, you're in a very tough situation. And, you know, of course, I don't know how you actually, you know, I, I, I the way that you're presenting yourself on this call, I don't know how authentic it is in, in um, presenting the way you actually feel about the situation. But I will say the way you've presented yourself on right. this call, you seem very, like, you seem very sort of you know I, I know you say you're dealing with a lot but you, you do seem very like calm and collected in your yeah sort of uh dealing with this situation so you're you're obviously a very mature and collected person i understand why your dad meddling in your affairs is bothers you to that point but um you know uh, i i think it's great that you've been able to handle this with so much clarity and um yeah good luck to you man that's 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 um thanks guys yeah for sure for <laughs> sure have a good night Anna. you as well thank you bye whatever armchair gecko therapy here but uh she had this like when when, it, when she's talking about her relationship with her father she like kind of had this idea of what she wanted a, a pretty confident idea of what she wanted down to down to these objective steps with her therapist of like I would like to bond with you once a week on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. like very definitive sort of way of going about it that's smart hi is this Jake yes this is Jake Jake um is there anything in particular you wanted to talk about this evening? Uh, that's right. Uh, I want to talk about me sleeping with my friend's sister. Mm. And what is your relationship like with your friend? Uh, he's, he's actually my best friend. I, he's actually one of my closest friends of all times. Um, and it, it's just a really awkward situation because of that. How does your friend does your friend know that you slept with his sister? He does. Hmm. And how did he find out? Did you tell him? Did she tell him? Did he find out some other way? It's um, it's it's actually a little bit worse than that. My friend, so so he had thrown a little bit. He had thrown a little bit of a party, and I attended. And and what made it weird is that the night after we were going to a tailgate, and he walked into his sister's room, and I was in there getting dressed, and made the connection right then and there of what had happened. So he he walked in on you essentially. He basically did walk in on me. Mm. Which made it really weird. Mm. And what was his reaction? I assume that you talked to him about this after the fact. Oh no, no! It was like it was even worse than that. I had we had gone to the tailgate, right? Which I. And we had gone to the tailgate, and he, we didn't say a word about it because he had drove me there, or I drove him there. And at the tailgate, what ended up happening is that, uh, you know, at some point, you know, we're all talking and stuff like that, and I ended up mentioning it to another friend, um, which I, I do regret and stuff like that, but I didn't end up telling another friend. And it's a large friend group of, like, like 20 to Oh, a, a little over 20 people. So what ended up happening is that everyone in the friend group ended up out really terrible for him because, you know, everyone's just dogging like that. And it's just a really awkward situation now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so 
this relationship that you have with your friend's sister, is it is it a purely sexual relationship, or or is there legitimate romance in there, legitimate feelings that you wish to pursue further? Uh, it's actually like it, it is um, more relationship. It, it's not pure. I I've not. So when I say I slept with her, I I mean, I've not had sex with her or anything like that. It, it, it is way more than that. I, I truly feel like I, I think she does as well. Um, and I think he also knows that I haven't had sex and stuff like that. But at the same time, I feel like to him, it doesn't really matter too much. Because, you know, the fact that I, I did sleep with the sister just makes it really weird. And it, I feel like it makes him so, so weird for him because it, I am his best friend. And, and to of such with his sister, I don't know if he finds it worse that I suck with her or that I might date her. And that 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 part is the most conflicting for me. Hmm. Look, I think. How old is your friend? You said you're you're 19, right? Uh huh. He's uh, about 21. He's 21. Yeah. 21 years old. Old enough. To be mature, I think your friend, look, look, I think your friend needs to grow up a little bit, a little bit, right? When you're, uh, uh, how old, how old is his sister? His sister's also 19. Okay. He needs to grow up a little bit. His sister is Mm -hmm. his sister, but uh, a person of her own independent agency, you know? She's free to do what she wants with who she wants, right? The, this idea that you have some form of ownership over your family and what they can and can't do, who they can and cannot see, it's kind of ridiculous, I think. Mm-hmm. So I think that that... How, how do- Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no. I, I actually want to hear what you do again. I'm sorry. Well, I was. I, 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 I sort of said what I, what I had to say about that. I, I feel like it's on your friend to kind of grow up and be like, you know, he doesn't own his sister. He doesn't own you. And there's nothing to me inherently wrong about you having a relationship with his sister if his sister likes you. Wants to be around you, all that. It's of her to do so, and it only becomes weird. What I think is weird about it is this this way in which it sounds like your friend is trying to control or have some kind of ownership over his his sister. That's what I think is is the concerning part to me. <laughs> So I entirely agree in a lot of ways, but I, one of the worst parts for me is like, how, how do I bring it up to him about that? How do I have the conversation with him about that? Because it seems like he's really trying to avoid it in any way possible. And it, to, it just makes it so awkward. And it feels like dampening our relationship. He's avoiding the conversation. Have you, have you attempted to initiate the conversation about this? I I actually really haven't. Well, then that's got to be on you to initiate this conversation. So, if you don't mind, how should I bring... Like, what's the most appropriate way that I could bring it up, if you don't mind me asking? Well, what's the truth? Tell Tell me the truth. I like words. her a lot, and I want, her to stay with it. and I'm I'm honestly worried that he's not okay. With it. Okay, you like her I a lot. Worried. You want to be with her. You want him to be okay with it, but you're worried he's not okay with it. That's your truth, right? That's how you feel. That is how I feel. Yes. Say that to him. That's how you do it. It's actually- yeah, you might be right. Just be honest with him. Yeah. Just be honest with him. 
It's not going to kill you. It's not going to kill him. It's not going to kill her. Just collect the truth and then present it to him. And that's the smoothest way that I believe you will have this conversation. Okay. And, and so this is just me being a little bit paranoid. Okay. But I, I just got to ask. I don't really have too many other people to ask, but what if he's not okay with it? What if, And like, it almost became a scenario where I had to choose between him and his sister. What, what do I do then? Well, that's up to you. But if you're asking my subjective opinion, I think him not being okay with it is a him problem. Because again, as I said, it's, mm. it's on him. He has to do the growing up of understanding that his sister is a independent person that uh, he does not have control over who she dates or what she does with her life. And I think that um, maturing into understanding that is on him more than it is on you. Yeah, thank you so much. I I actually really appreciate this a lot. Good, good, good. Um, well, good luck to you in uh, addressing this. I hope it doesn't get too uncomfortable for you. And uh, I appreciate you calling. Uh, absolutely. Oh, uh, sorry. My friend, sorry. Can I ask you one more question? This isn't me or anything like that. Is it cool if I ask you one more question? What's up? So my friend's asking me what, uh, what's your favorite color? Blue. Blue? All right. Thank you so much. Have a good night. All right. Have a good one. Karina? Hey. What's going on? Karina, 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 Karina. Karina, we've, we've, I feel like we've talked to a lot of people this evening who, um, how do I put this? They, they're wondering if they're doing the uh, correct thing with their lives. That's a hard thing to 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 figure out. I wonder that all all the time, you know. I I I'm growing uh, more and more more and more um, aware of uh, my own mortality and the fact that you know you think that the days you think you have time but you don't. The days they 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 go by right, and you know. <sighs> How do you, how do you, how do you, how do you know? How do you know? Um, how do you know, Karina? How do you know, Karina? How do you know that you're doing the right thing, Karina? I feel like at the end of the day, I will like reflect upon the things that I've done and just see how I feel that I've been doing. I don't always know that I'm doing the right thing all the time. But I feel like as long as I genuinely try to make good decisions, at least I can learn from them if it wasn't the right choice. Mm. Tell me, tell me, uh, uh, I mean, are, are, there, are there decisions that you've made in the past that you are, you look back and you, you wish you had not made? I normally am not a person to say that I regret anything. The only thing I would say I wish I did sooner was start investing at a younger age. What would, what would you have invested in? Bitcoin in 2010 for sure. Perhaps mm-hmm. uh, buying a house in uh, during the recession in the 2008 to 2010 time when the housing mm-hmm. prices tanked. So you wish you had made more investments. But, I mean, what would you have done with the money now? Is, 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 is money... If you had a lot of money... How would you use it to improve your life? I would buy so many wigs. I like love dressing up and doing costumes and stuff. And I recently shaved my head and I've been loving it. But I am like wearing all these crazy wigs and I would just get all these different colors and styles and like be a different person every day. Karina, it says here that you are feeling really good about life today. You want to share good things you have going on says you're in a polyamorous relationship that you feel is notable. It says you've been married for 10 years and that you're a flight attendant. 
Now, of all those things that you've discussed, is, uh, which, which, what, 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 do you, what do you, what do you feel would be um, the best one to talk about this evening? I am really been enjoying that I'm in a polyamorous relationship lately. So, my husband and I, we've been seeing this couple, and we've been dating for about four months now. So, yeah, I have a husband and a boyfriend, and then he has a joy friend uh, because the person that he's seeing they're non-binary so they prefer joy friend over girlfriend and yeah it's a lot of fun because um yes he gets to like hang out and like do the things that i'm not like they smoke weed and then my boyfriend and i like to drink so we get like share each other's passions and interests that like maybe my husband doesn't always want to do and and are you are you good friends with your husband's uh joy friend yeah, we get along really well. Yeah, I really like them. We um yeah, we all we're all dating each other. It's it's quite the experience actually. And have you always been in a polyamorous relationship? I've always wanted to be. We've we've had um a girlfriend in the past. So I guess whatever you call a three-person poly I guess it would still would be polyamorous. We, we've had a girlfriend in the past, and it's always been my idea, which is why I think we've been in a, they had good luck initiating, like, threesomes and having a girlfriend and having another partner. is like I will kind of, like, start that process of seeking another person or another couple, and we've had a lot of good luck that way. Mm-hmm. So is, is this a, a lifestyle that you have always wanted to pursue? Uh, or, or do you 100%. feel like, so oh, interesting, interesting. Um, and has it been difficult to find other people who are, who are matched up with you in the desire to pursue this lifestyle? Yeah, it's very, um, I believe unique lifestyle. I feel like the percentage of people that can get on board with it. We've had like, we've had a couple other couples approach us. But either like we weren't ready as a couple or like only one person, like the guy would come on to me, but not both of us or his girlfriend. So it's weird and imbalanced. So it took us quite a long time before we actually found someone like another couple that like we really clicked with. Hmm. And and would you consider all of you, all of, all of yourselves to to all be, uh, I guess, I guess you would say pansexual? necessarily say so i would say the joy friend and i are bisexual and then both of the men are definitely straight so they're not like doing anything with each other Mm -hmm. and has it been difficult to because this sounds like the the relationships are not are not purely sexual they're also are also romantic and emotional relationships that is you're absolutely right. It's a whole nother level because there's a physical attraction. I feel like initially with all that, like new partner, new person in the bedroom, but there is all these extra layers. Like we're learning how maybe one person is a little bit more emotionally available than the other. Maybe someone else is like better at giving advice or seeing things in a different perspective. And yeah, you're right. There's this whole like emotional, like physical, um, mental, spiritual levels and different perspectives. I think that's probably my favorite part about it is you get different perspectives about life or opinions or situations that maybe you don't get from what I like to call your main, your main partner. Your main partner. Okay, so there are, there are you would say, rankings within the system. Mm-hmm. And now does that ever get difficult with people being unhappy with how they rank? I think communication is definitely the best thing for that. And maybe it could be challenging for like a new poly poly couple that like maybe hasn't been dating very for very long. But I feel like because my husband and I like were married and we've been like established for so long, like he's just my main, like there's no distinguishable like I never felt like comp competitive or worried anyone's going to take anyone away from each other. I just think it's laughable because um, you just know who your main person is. And as long as you're like 
taking care of them, then other people can come along for the ride. It's true. It desi- it, it it requires a a a strong amount of trust between the two of you that you are mm-hmm. are emotionally committed to one another uh, while still being able to pursue uh, external emotional connections. Yeah, you know, you're so right about that. It's actually feeling really good to talk to someone about this because uh, I've only told like a few people in my friend group, but we're kind of private about it because it's not the most accepted lifestyle in the whole world. So you're making me realize some things. That, yeah, the, the emotional um, stability is very strong. Why do you feel as though you cannot tell your friends that you are polyamorous? It's challenging to explain, and I feel like a lot of people wouldn't be interested or choose in that lifestyle. And I'm fortunate I live in the part of the world, I'm in Portland, Oregon, where people are a little bit more open-minded and liberal. But I feel like some of it, like depending on where you live, it can be hard to come out as poly, like let alone, you know, in the LGBT community or gay. Like, unfortunately, I wish it wasn't the type of world that we live in. But I, I kind of see it more as like my personal life that I'm poly and I just kind of tell my very close friends but I don't like advertise it on like my social media or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Do you, do, do you feel any sort of, of internal, internal shame about it or, or is it merely an issue of you like having your, your personal life private and that's just a, a, a simple preference of yours? Mm, I'd say it's a preference. Um, I, I just like to keep some things, you know, just some things on the down low, some, some secretive. But I'm I'm proud to be by and have another couple that's in our lives and um, someone that we just get to, like, ex- share experiences with. Hmm. Now, I, I'm actually I have a question about 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 this lifestyle. Do you find yourself content with your current your current partnerships that you have in your life or does the fact that your all of your agreement with other with with each other leaves you able to pursue even more relationships and connections outside of your existing ones does does that ever create any any kind of disease of more for you where where you desire even even further even further partners or are you very fully content with the amount of relationships that you currently have I I feel fairly content with where we are I'm we're fairly exclusive to just this one couple but it wouldn't be completely like out of the ordinary if like maybe we wanted to go off and do like a threesome thing or like have another girl in the, with us but at this time like it's already pretty invo- <clears throat> involved um i just don't have time for that <laughs> i guess um i already you know like dating one person is pretty involved let alone you know three and it's okay. not just sex like we're here for each other like emotionally and mentally too mm-hmm Mm-hmm. See, it's it's interesting that you're describing all this because I think to myself, I'm like, you know, I mean, even having one partner, having one, I mean, because here's the thing, your own emotions, feelings, desires, all that stuff, it's hard enough to manage like yourself, right? Your feelings, emotions, and then you bring it, mm-hmm. and then if you want to have a partner, you you, you, you you know, you plug in the second controller. Now you're dealing with a whole other set of emotions and, and feelings in your life and then if you add a to add a to add a third and a fourth set of I mean that's like it's, it's, it's like <laughs> just a high wire juggling act I'm I'm impressed by it 100% <laughs> it it's a lot of emotions and I like to joke that 
I save all my crappy, really bad shit for my main because he's already married and he has to put up with me. <laughs> and then I had, I save my most fun best self for my boyfriend. Not that we're not. <clears throat> <clears throat> ah, excuse me. Not that we're not like I'm not emotionally available to my boyfriend, but my main kind of does more of the heavy stuff, if you will. This sounds like when you like when people who um, have been with one cell phone company for a long time get upset that the new customers <laughs> get a better deal. Hundred <laughs> percent. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, we just keep adding extra lines. That's what my relationship life is. <laughs> what is your name again? Karina. Karina, uh, thank you for calling. Is there any other thoughts, feelings, sentiments, anything at all that you wish to share with the people before we go? Yeah, um, anyone that's interested in um, poly lifestyle is just uh, just communicate a lot with each other and um, have a good time. Thank you for calling, Karina. Have a good rest of the night. Yeah, thanks, Lyle. Hello? Hello? How are you? Doing good. How about yourself? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm a gecko on the computer underwater. Um, how can I get you this evening, Eli? Um, really just need advice. I know, you know, you're not a doctor or a therapist by any means, but really have this problem about... You know, the proper timing of going to the restroom. Sure. Sometimes it happens on a toilet. Sometimes it happens in my pants and don't really know how to go about it. Uh, how often are you going to the bathroom in your pants? Uh, I would say about every every three months, ever since I was about seven years old. Every three months, you're about seven years old. How old are you now? 22. Chat, someone do that math. Do you know the math? What's the math on this? Every three months. Uh, here, here, we can do the math right now. Okay, 22 I'm, minus 7. What's that? 15. 15. Okay, 15 times uh, 4. Every quarter. So, all right, so that's 60 times. You've done, you've gone to the bathroom pants 60 times throughout your whole life. Yeah. It, it, thinking about that with that big of a number, it's happened pretty often. A lot I feel like 60 times. I, 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 genuinely, I feel like 60 times. It's not that much. That's not that bad. It's once a quarter. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really not bad. It's not bad. Okay. Well, look, don't let me tell you it's not bad. How do you feel about you going to the bathroom in your pants? What is that experience like for you? Is it is it severely unpleasant? Uh, I would just say the amount of stress that it causes, like the buildup to the poop, it just stresses me out. It happens, you know, when I'm out partying. It happens to me when I'm driving. And an uncomfortable feeling eventually you know the poop gets cold mm. and i have to throw away a good pair of underwear you know all right so let's break down that stress what like like to, to the bare bones what aspects of pooping your pants stress you out the most because there's several there's several of them right there's uh the the physical uncomfortable sensation of being in that situation there's a little bit of embarrassment there there's mm, a financial thing you might have to throw out those underwear and buy new ones uh, of all the different variables of, of of what happens to you when you have shat your pants what stresses you out the most or is it or is it a symphony of those things I believe it's a symphony, but the main thing that gets under my skin is, you know, thinking that I have a good chance of reaching the toilet when in reality, you know, I wasn't even close to the toilet. Yeah. Okay, so maybe this is a, a issue of acceptance. 
right? Because you're anticipating that you will be able to get to the bathroom in time for you to not shit your pants. And that gets your hopes up, which leaves you vulnerable and unprepared to emotionally deal with this situation that has been inevitable all along. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of like a cat chasing a laser when I think of it. Yeah. Uh, you said you were deployed in Iraq when this happened? Yeah, it's, it uh, happened to me a couple times there. And uh, one time it was with P, and it was not good. We were on mission, and uh, there's really nothing I could do about it. You know, just 12 hours, you know, poopy pants and wet underwear. Wow, so you were walking around for 12 hours with poopy pants in uh, on a mission. What was the what was the mission? Uh, we were escorting some British generals around. Yep. And uh, you know, when we're driving, we drove like 4 hours straight and you know, you can't stop. And with the level amount of security of my mission I required, you know, I couldn't couldn't leave my post, couldn't go anywhere. So I just had to deal with it. Mm. And did anybody else in your squad know that you had pooped your pants or were you able to keep it a secret for 12 hours? Uh, one person knew about it. It was my uh, platoon leader. He was an officer. He uh, he mentioned that you know, our vehicle smelled like poop and I told him, I'm like, hey, yeah, actually, you know, pooped my pants at the beginning of the mission. And he just said, you know, just sit tight. See it happens. But, uh, oh. yeah. So he was understanding about it. He, he didn't give you a hard time. No, he didn't. But when we got back to our outpost, he, uh, he told everybody and, from then on out for the rest of the deployment, everyone called me Poopy Pants or a variation of that name. He told everybody. Why did he tell everybody? Uh, I just, from his point of view, I think it would be funny. And I kind of laughed a little bit too, but, you know, it got old pretty easy. Well, think about it like this. It got old for you. For everyone else, for everyone yeah. else in the platoon, it was probably pretty funny for at least a solid amount of time after it stopped being funny for you. Yeah, and I can, I think I know where you're going with this. You know, it, it provided someone else, you know, a joyful experience to gain that laughter to show that sunshine through the clouds or whatever. But, uh, but yeah, you know what? Uh, I I wasn't even thinking about it like that. But now that you bring it up, that is a very nice positive spin on things. You were able to actually provide value to your uh, fellow Americans by pooping your pants. And in a way, yeah, it is your job, uh, being in the military, to, I, I suppose, uh, uh, what, what the ethos of it is to protect and serve. Right? And yeah. by pooping your pants, you were in a way serving. Yeah. I, I didn't I didn't see it that way, but, you know, in the bigger picture, you know, I, I did something good. What did you say your name was? Eli. Thank you for calling, Eli. You have a good night, Jack. Hello, Kelsey. Hi, Gek. How are you? I'm a gecko on the computer. Kelsey, it says here you have a story about a lumberjack incident that happened in I the do. seventh grade. What is what is this incident? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really haunted me since. Um, and if any of my classmates for, are watching from way back when, you know what I'm talking about, but... Uh, Basically, what happened was our our teachers. This this was a year where we had, I guess, like career exploration. So they they yeah. decided let's go take them on a vocational exp uh, exploration field trip. And so 
um, we were privileged enough. We got to go on a field trip uh, to the woods um, in Arkansas. Um, that's where I grew up. And uh, we went to this uh, um, forestry area and they were, it was like this cool place where I guess, you know, the bunch of lumberjacks go out and business people and they sell lumber to like all these other countries and to representatives who come out. We learned about the trade and unbeknownst to us, there was a lumberjack competition that was going on, an international lumberjack competition. I was like, holy crap, this is pretty cool. Um, so we ride on up to the log rolling event and there were two lumberjacks, right? And they're all decked out. They get at it. So they do a couple rounds of log rolling until one of them, he, he racks himself on a log, right? But valiantly, he gets back up. And he starts spinning on the log again. They resume the competition, but like, um, you know, I'm, I'm a seventh grade girl, and I'm, I'm just, I was really sheltered as a kid. I didn't know what was happening. I saw a little pink thing dangling in the wind, and his penis was out. Like he had split his pants, and just like in front of my seventh grade class, he was just like rolling along and like bouncing a little. It was like this little mole rat looking thing. And I didn't know about growers versus showers. I didn't know any of that. And um, anyway, next week we had sex education and they kind of forced that on us. And, um, you know, now I look at like an ax or a beard or like plaid even, and I just can't think of anything else. And by extension trees, um, piles of wood, PBR, you know, lumberjack stuff. They all make you think specifically of that lumberjack's penis. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hmm. So this lumberjack, when his pants split and his penis was exposed to a bunch of 7th graders, did he know? I honestly kind of think he did. And that's the, that's the really? sick part. Really? I, he kind of had like a look, like a little twinkle in his eye. And now, I, to this day, yeah, I mean, to this day, I just don't know. Like, I can't confirm it. Um, obviously, if I could speak to the guy, which I still, I don't think I would ever. But, um, I mean, he's going to be like this creepy old man in a bar, you know, drinking away his sorrows. And one day he confesses to a guy, he's like, you know what I did? I log rolled. My penis was out in front of a bunch of seventh graders. You know what? I liked it. That's what he's gonna say. Jeez. I have a feeling. What? How? How did? How did your school? Where'd your school find this guy? Honestly, I don't know. I think it was one of the newer teachers that set this whole thing up. She was kind of horrified. Um, I. Yeah, what is like don't what know. what hap- so what happens after this? Does the guy does anyone be like, "Hey, man, that you're like when your fly is down, people at least have the common courtesy to tell you. No one told this man what 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 is going on?" I think we were we were all in shock. I didn't really see a whole lot of what happened after that because they kind of like were like, "Okay, kids, let's go. It's it's time to go home," you know, but mm-hmm. I always like to wonder what happened i can't get okay, past so you that say though. whenever you look at an axe or a piece of what anything lumberjack you think about specifically that guy's penis does that does that bother you do you, yeah. do you wish that you could uh look at trees without thinking about that Honestly, yeah. I mean, like, when I look at trees and stuff, I want to, like, envision, you know, like, oh, cool, tree houses or, like, oh, nature. But no, mm. instead, penis. Mm. I, you, there's got to be some sort of replacement. Uh, I mean, this is, like, a, another weird, this is, like, a real therapist thing. Like, you can probably do some sort of mental hack to, like, re- rewire your brain to associate trees with, like, something else. But you got you to gotta replace it with something. I, I don't know, there's definitely something here with yeah, neurons you something. can do. What yeah, would you what, what do you what do you what do you want to think it. of when you uh what do you what do you want to think of when you see trees? You want to think of like life and all that dumb stuff? Probably probably like birds and shit. Okay. Like cool birds, not not like the weird ones. 
Mm. You ever, you ever tried classical Those conditioning? Cool. Like, all right, every time you see a bird, and every time you see a tree and you think of penis, you like, you ever make an effort? You're like, oh, I'm gonna start thinking about birds now. Like, you try to like shove that in there, you know? Honestly, I've never tried, but I think now I'm kind of equipped with something else. So I, I'll I'll try to think of like owls or hawks or like cool little eagles or something. Yeah, yeah. Now you got like something to yeah. replace the penis with. Otherwise, that's, that's a good start. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I'll try that. Oh, is there anything else you want to talk about before we go, Casey? Um, no, I think I'm good, Gek. I, I think uh, you've helped me. And, uh, and yeah, I wish you a really good night. And I hope you, you never have that happen ever. Oh, what, a lumberjack yeah. exposes penis to me? Just any kind of, like, penis exposure that's unwanted or unwelcome. I, I appreciate you yeah. uh, wishing that upon me. Just looking out for you, Gek. Have a good night, Casey. You too. Hello? Hello? Oh, this is interesting. Jeremy, it says here that you were dealing with, quote, a lot of idiots, end quote, and, quote, people pushing your buttons lately end quote yeah yeah so i i got a i got an interesting story about that so um you know uh i'm in college right now you know getting my degree you know wasting my money a little bit here and there um and i just wanted your overall advice because there's this one fucko that like I, I like the word fucko so i'm gonna use that um and he was like I'm in this bio class, you know, gen eds suck, but I have to finish them up this year. And I like walking with my sunglasses because, you know, I like seeing outside. And he's like shaming me for wearing sunglasses. And I'm like, bro, I don't even know you. I like seeing when it's uh, bright outside. Wait, uh, and then like, uh, 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 uh. You, said huh. sh- you said he started shaming you for your sunglasses. What is that <laughs> like in practice? Um, it, It's like, it, it's like, I guess bullying is probably the like right term, but I couldn't really care. But it's like this boil, guy boil it down, lives. Bo- bo- boil it down to me for like, uh, uh, boil it down to me as some sort of, uh, uh, physical or verbal action. Like to shame someone, I it's not a it's not a real action. What did he actually do or say? Okay, okay, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. All right, so this guy basically, um, he. He just makes comments about anything I'm wearing or things that I'm doing or, like, if I'm, like, late to class or whatever. And it's more so, like, I really shouldn't let it bother me at all because it's stupid. But he just, like, lives in my head rent-free. You know what Jeremy, I mean? Like, it's not one person. Jeremy, 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 we're, we're, you're going on this long thing. And I get you. There's a lot of emotion here. And you're selling me the emotion. Oh, yeah. So much emotion. emotion. Yeah. You're, you're upset at this guy. You don't like this guy. But... Lost in all this emotion, we have we really you, you haven't said anything. What did he actually say? It's more so than from what he's actually saying because he's not necessarily being an asshole with any of it. It's just like Jer- some no, snarky comment, Jeremy, like, let, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy, oh, Jeremy, uh-huh. I'm not letting you do this again, okay? Because we're gonna okay, get, okay, we, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, you've yeah. Sold the, you've sold us, yeah, the you get the emotion, you get the emotion, get the emotion. right? Yeah, okay, okay, I get it that you don't like this guy, but Jeremy, yeah. What yeah, yeah. did he say? So he will be like, I come into class and he'll be like, oh, you with the sunglasses again? Or it's really nothing like that bad. If that makes any sense. But it gets under my skin, you know? Like you can feel that emotion, you know, that anger. It's like he's just uh, paying attention to, like, every little thing I'm doing and making, like, some really tiny comment, like, oh, you with the sunglasses. Um, and, like, I don't know why it bothers me, but he lives in my head rent-free, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay, it's all right, all right. I, I, I feel like I get you now. I feel like I get you now. He's referring to you like by it's hard to like give. He's referring to you by your clothes, and, and he's making... Okay, okay. I, I get this now. The reason why... We're not singling out any particular remark he made is because at the end of the day, it's not about the remark. It's about the general sentiment that he is giving off 
uh, through multiple strings of things that he's saying and doing and the way he's acting. So, okay, I understand now. So this guy's who? This guy's in one of your classes. Yeah, yeah, he's in one of my classes, and yeah, I agree. I think yeah, the overall sentiment. It's like it really shouldn't be that big of a deal, but it's just like, and it's not really necessarily like disrespectful either. It's just like, and I don't want to be an asshole to him and be like, bro, like shut the fuck up, right? Because I'm not trying to start issues. Or can and I ask I'm you like, another question? Can I ask you that question? Because I'm, I'm yeah, of course. Are you upset that you are upset by this? Yeah, yeah. Like it really shouldn't be something I'm upset. Well, and I don't even know if "upset" is the right word. I'm just like so like annoyed by it that it's like upsetting me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a, I got a couple things here. Maybe let's see. Um, yeah, let's see right, it. So let's you, hear so it. okay, well, okay. But so when you brought you, okay, the idea. I can hear this from from what you're saying. The idea of saying something to him, of going back to him, is boiling in your head. But typically, that's I mean, that's true, because you, you told me, you were like, I think about saying that. But when that idea boils in your head, it boils in your head in the form of, hey, shut the fuck up, fuck you, don't you dare talk about me, go fuck yourself. Like, you know, it, 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 when it boils in your head, it boils in your head in the form of, let's go back aggressive. I ask you, have you considered other angles of 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 going back to him aside from just the the aggressive angle? And a, and, I don't and a really know, angle, like you know, an angle of hey, I you know, look, I don't know if you're meaning to do this. I don't know what the hell's going on here, but why do you keep you know, and in, in, in an appeal, an inquisitive angle. Why are you talking to me like this? It's it's bothering me. Look, can we get down to the to the bottom of this here? Yeah, I don't know if I thought of any other angle. Um, like I said, when I I meant like I've been dealing with a lot of idiots. There's just a lot of people that are like under my skin, good or bad reasons. And, you know, it's like he's like one of those last straws. Like, I've had more serious things go on. And so I think him being like that last straw is why I'm like thinking that angle. Like, mm, I-, I hate this guy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have, okay, this guy, this guy in particular. Have you had any interactions with him outside of him just t- calling you sunglasses, boy? Nah, nah. It's weird. It's weird. Um, yeah, I haven't had, like, any interaction with him before. It's, like, only in class. Like, That's why I'm, like, hmm. I feel like you gotta you gotta appeal to him in some way. You gotta have a further... If this guy is really living in your head rent-free, I feel like somewhere yeah. in this timeline is a healing moment where you actually get to know this guy. Because you are you hate him because he's, you know, kind of fucking with you and, and putting off this antagonistic sentiment, but... You two don't really know each other at all. Yeah. How could you get to know him more? And how would that change the way he acts towards you? And how would that change the way you act towards him? I don't know. Because I don't know sort of you, what's going on. You know, on. I don't know. I feel like, you know, that's not, a, that's not a terrible idea. But I feel like that's a lot of work. Because I look at it, it the class like had like five weeks left to it. And, you know, once class is over... I probably won't see him again, right? Okay. Well, listen. And listen, I, okay, like, I, I like I said, I, I have I more like... At, I know what you're getting at and I have a response to it. Okay. 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 I'm, I'm here and I'm listening. You don't want to put... Okay. You don't want to put in the work. You don't want to put in the work because... Okay, great. I have this healing moment with this guy, uh, but then it's over, right? You only have five weeks left. So what's the point of... Putting yeah, it? yeah. It's not about this particular iteration... It's about the the interpersonal skills you develop as a result of this iteration that you can then take with you the next time you encounter a situation like this. So that I would argue it is worth the work if you think about it like that. Yo, that actually, that's you know, that's a really positive way of looking at it. I'm not gonna lie. 
that's an interesting, you know, that's a, I don't really know uh, what to say to that, but, you know, I may need to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing you could do, because, look, I want you to get something out of this, because this is clearly fucking bothering you. And um, I'm doing yeah, this myself yeah. because I'm a human being and I have lots of things that happen to me in my life that piss me off <laughs> that I'm trying to deal with better. Right. Um, you could go outward with it, try to learn from this guy, try to get to know him better, and then maybe uh, you have this weird healing moment where you're like, oh, shit, all I had to do was talk to this guy for five minutes and then now I know what he's about. And now uh, I've learned, hey, maybe the next time someone just pisses me off or I'm getting a bad vibe from them. Or I think they're a fucking idiot. Ah, oh, it's just like the last time. All I gotta do is talk to them for five minutes and my, my perspective will change. Or you can go inward with it and just decide not to let it bother you. You can do both. I mean, what do you think about this? Yeah, this, and you know, I thought call, of the you know, whole... What, what do you think about everything that we've talked about right now? And do you feel like... Do, do you feel inclined to action upon it? I think you bring up, I actually do feel some action. You know, I'm not going to lie. Before this, I was like, I was like, you know, may as well. I have nothing to do tonight. And I saw you, you were streaming. And I was like, may as well get another perspective into it. Because you already know, you know, I'm ranting to like my friends or whatever. And they're all like, you know, this guy sounds like, uh, you know, uh, annoying, whatever, so on and so forth. And I kind of find another perspective, like, you know, a non-biased perspective. You know what I mean? So I definitely, you know, course of action, you know, whatever that is, I got to figure that out. But like I said, I I have no clue why I even like let it bother me. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, Jeremy, um, thank you for calling. And, uh, you know, hit us back. Hit us back. Let us know if you do decide to. I don't want to use the word confront, but let us know if you decide to talk to this guy. And sort of see what's going on. Yeah, okay. Come at it from a curious perspective, not a perspective of anger, and see what happens. Okay, all right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Of course. Thank you for calling, Jeremy. Yeah, have a good one. Hello, Matt. Hello. What's going on with you? Nothing much, Gek. Nothing much. What's going on with you? Um, I can't think of a fifth way to answer that question. It says here you want to know my thoughts on circumcision, and that's not true. You want to tell me your thoughts on circumcision. That's what a lot of people do is they'll say, what do you think about this? So that after they're done talking, they can say what they think. And I'm going to skip to that. All right, that's, that's a fair way to go. Am I was well, I correct or am I being a dick? I mean, I'd I'd say you're. You can say if I, if I'm being a, if I'm being a dick, I want you to say Lyle, you're being kind of a dick right now, and you need to calm down. All right, Lyle, you do need to yeah. calm down just a little bit. Am I being just, a dick? I want like, you to say. I want you yeah. to tell me I'm being a dick. If, I, if you think I'm being a dick, I want you to tell me. Well, if I'm gonna be specific, you're being a you're being an uncircumcised dick. It says here you have regular conversations with your friends about this, and you think it's very odd that people decide to do this. Why do you think it is odd that um, people get circumcised? And I don't think it's odd that people get circumcised, per se. I think it's odd that people look at uh, an infant's penis and decide to go ahead and snip it up a little bit, you know? and. Oh, that people circumcise their children? Just... Yes, exactly. Are you Jewish? No, I am not. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm I'm Jewish, and I have been circumcised. And you know what, Matt? I uh, completely and utterly agree with you. I have no idea why people do this. Thank you. Thank you, Get. I think you might be the first person who, I mean, not even to, like, religion aside, I think you're the first person to agree with me in 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 general. Well, okay, and your other friends, it. what do they tell you when they tell you that you're wrong? What what, what are their arguments they're in like, favor? 
they're like, have you, it's, it's dirty, it's, it's gross, it's this, that, and the other. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not talking about that. You know, I like, I like my penis. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with that, you know, but I don't like that. I didn't get to decide on right. how it ended up looking, you know, like I never got right. to, if, if my penis was uncircumcised, I would keep it clean. You know, if, if right. you've seen an uncircumcised penis that's dirty, that's their fault for not keeping it clean. You know, they I should really I do. No, no, I agree. I, if I had to make any amendment to the Jewish religion, I would perform the circumcision on the same day as the bar mitzvah. Because when you're 13, you have a little bit more conscience, conscious of a choice there. But you then see, again, that, if that, they did, if they did that, I that, think if they did that and they told every bar mitzvah, bar mitzvah thirteen year old boy whether or not um, they want to chop off the tip of the penis, I, I, I'd have to gander that about a hundred percent would say no. I I would also agree with that. I'm sure that the the surgery itself is probably a lot more painful as the older you get. You know, I definitely right, wouldn't right. get it as a as a 25 year old now, you know, it's, that would be painful, you know? So I don't know. It's, it's just a weird concept to me. Yeah. Now, Hey, what do you think has... about this? You know what a moil is? No, what's a, a moil? What's that? A moil is a guy, his only, that's his job. All right. His profession, his life's work is to chop off the uh, tip of baby's penises. Wow. Specifically baby penises, not adult to adolescent penises. I actually, dude, I've never thought about that. Have there been guys who get circumcised in adulthood? Do people ever oh, get absolutely. circumcised in adulthood? Absolutely. Really? People are, yeah, people would be, I mean, like, I, I don't personally know, but I'm, I can only imagine that there are some self-conscious people out there that would go to the lengths of circumcising at a later date, you know, because they're not, they're self-conscious or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. Maybe, maybe it's uncomfortable. Maybe it's a surgical, maybe, maybe it's a medical thing and they have to do yeah. it, which yeah. is also a whole nother thing too. I haven't even looked into that, whether or not it's like a, it's a problem. I, I don't know whether it's probably. I'll tell you, I'll tell you this though. I'll tell you this. I'm pretty sure that circumcision does make your penis look bigger. Maybe that is part of the 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 the, the Jewish thing. Maybe uh, I didn't I didn't pay a lot of attention in Hebrew school, but maybe we value large penises in the Torah or something. You see, that's what I think is. I, that's what that's what the image that's going on in my head, right? Is that yeah. the whoever is in charge of? All right, I'm. You gotta you gotta snip that baby's penis. Yeah. Why? Why do? Why did they have to sneak that baby's penis? You know who gave the get that guy the key to who? Who put him in charge? You know, I always I, thought. I, so when I first started watching porn, when I was like, uh, what, maybe fourteen or something like that, it wasn't until then I had never seen. I, I I had never. All the, like, guys' dicks that I had seen up until then were, like, you know, my dad and, like, I went to Jewish summer camp, so all, all those, you know, we would all see each other's dicks, like, in the showers or whatever, and all those guys' dicks were circumcised. So when I was, so the, all, all the dicks I ever saw growing up before porn were circumcised dicks. And then at 14, I saw a guy on the internet, a guy whose fucking foreskin covered the entirety of his penis. And I was like, what's going on? I thought he had some sort of disease. I was like, what's going on with this guy? Um, so I always thought that circumcision was the default. I didn't know that, like, there was something missing from all the penises that I have seen, including my own. Um, well, on the contrary to that, I will say, you know, I'm just thinking of this now. I've never yeah. really, growing up, I never really experienced seeing other people's penises i only saw my own penis you know so mm -hmm. maybe that has something to do with maybe they're like oh you're gonna see other people's penises yeah they want it to look better you know they're thinking ahead well matt i hope that we find an answer to this question i mean we could probably just google this 
If you're listening to this, I'm uh, sure we, I, Google it and then send an email to lyleforeverandever at gmail.com with the answer as to why people get circumcised. And for the love of God, do not include any pictures. Matt, thank you for calling. Have a good rest of the night. Thank you for answering, Gak, you too. Thank you for having me.